Minecraft, one of the most influential games of our time. Build a house, explore, mine, create something amazing. What if I told you Minecraft doesn't need three dimensions to be awesome? It is my mission to make Minecraft. We're gonna cut out one of the dimensions and make something as grand. This project started as a little prototype because I've always wanted to build a 2D game where you can build. After exploring Godot 4.0 and seeing how strong tile maps are, I started realizing that this idea was actually possible. Since that hideous prototype, the pixel art has gotten an overhaul. Inventory system is working, but we're not using the hotbar to determine what item we're holding or building with. But before we get into more of the blocks, we really gotta make a save system. Let's get cracking. Call this save two. I'm here. Go into save two. Let's build something really quick. Save the game. Go back to the main menu. If we go to save two, what we've built is there. We also have multiple worlds. This is my other world. And we can also delete. Hello. Alrighty, so we got all the boring save stuff out of the way. Today we're going to do something very, very cool. What is Minecraft without open, expansive, random world? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do procedural generation. So in order to randomly generate beautiful worlds, we need to understand Perlin noise. Perlin noise was created by Ken Perlin because he was sick of machine-like computer-generated imagery at the time. So what does he do? He creates an algorithm for it. If you know a bit of linear algebra, I highly recommend looking at how this algorithm works but it's not necessary to implement procedural generation. Perlin Noise was created in 1983 and was since refined in 2001, but was released under a patent. Thankfully, the community got together and created Open Simplex Noise, an algorithm free to the public, which is based off simplex noise, but avoids significant characteristics. Upon researching this, I realized that the patent for simplex noise expired in January 2022. So maybe it's possible to use simplex noise? So this is the result of open simplex noise. And there are some variables you can manipulate, like octaves and periods, in order to get different results. Notice there is white, black, and all shades of gray. Let's say if we want to create mountains. We can do so by assigning numbers to these colors. White are for the mountains and black for the valleys. And brighter grays have higher elevation than darker grays. That's basically what I'm doing in my game. But instead of mountains, I'm placing water tiles for elevations lower than 0 0.3 and grass tiles for elevations higher than 0.3. I'm also generating two different noise maps, one for moisture and one for temperature. That way I can create different biomes. For instance, we can say if the moisture is very low, like 0 to 0 0.2, and the temperature is very high, 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, and the altitude is above 0 0.4, make it a desert. And we slowly fill in the gaps with different biomes. Hey yo guys, so I finally got this to work with the save system and I created a new menu. I think it looks pretty dope. So every time you create a new world, it, there is a whole world procedurally generated. So you can see there's placeholder art for now, like purple is a different biome, this is a different biome, this is... All the different tile cell colors represents a different biome and it's a big mess right now. I'm gonna have to tweak the numbers because I'm not very satisfied with how they look right now, but that's definitely gonna take some time to get it to where it's, it's really nice. And looking at how uh, these purple ones look, I think if I reduce the size of them, I could also generate some lava pools. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities in this. The only thing we haven't done here is infinite worlds and I definitely wanna do that. Um, so yeah. Alrighty, so I was so sick of that ugly interface for choosing the blocks. I had to implement this before the next episode. So we now have a functioning hotbar and you can choose different types of blocks. And also, yeah, it is working now because that was very annoying. <laughs> Um, definitely the system needs a lot of tweaking. There's not really ways to get resources, so we're gonna have to do that. I think in the next part we'll get to resource collecting, crafting, and who knows what else. So yeah, I just wanted to show you a little roadmap for the project. We're not specifically done with procedural generation, so we will get to that later on in the other episodes, but the, the bulk of the algorithm is done. We might add more features, but for now these are the core features to the game. So let me know if there's any features I'm missing and what you would like to see implemented next. All 
Alrighty guys, that's enough progress for one week. <laughs> Stay tuned for part two though, because that's coming. If you want to try a demo, then please check out my Patreon. You'll help support the channel. There is a demo in the first tier and source code on the second tier. Yeah, that's sweet source code. <laughs> so alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoy it. Leave comments down for any suggestions because this game is hot in development and you can influence it. Heck yeah.